Hi, this is David Patterson and Armando Fox from UC Berkeley. Uh, this article uh, is appearing in the May issue of Communications of the ACM and this video is associated with it. If you're not viewing this from the ACM website, you can find it at sasbook.info, a preprint of the article. When we first wrote this article, we hadn't had a chance to teach a massive online open course, which we have since then. And surprisingly, this course that we developed using Agile techniques and cloud computing at Berkeley turned out to be a great match to the massive online open course, or a MOOC. So one of the reasons that we think this happened in retrospect, uh, in the article we discussed that what worked well in the Berkeley course was to embrace uh, the Rails and Agile ecosystem, in part because they have the best tools for being highly productive. And our view was that uh, if we actually gave students good tools to help support the practices that we teach, the students would be more likely to actually follow the advice we give them rather than sort of listening to lecture and then going off and coding the way we've always done. Uh, so for those of you who are familiar with the uh, Rails ecosystem, we use RSpec, we use Cucumber, we use Pivotal Tracker, uh, we do the, the full Agile and XP process. And uh, indeed, at Berkeley, our experience has been that the tools do help the students really master and practice the concepts. And they also critically make it possible to turn grading from a qualitative manual exercise into a quantitative exercise that the tools can be used to automatically check. And in, when we offered the MOOC, this turned out to be uh, a key advantage because we were able to offer auto graders for programming assignments that range from testing your code to testing your tests uh, to even being able to make stylistic suggestions about your code uh, all automatically rather than having sort of a trivial did your program print out the right answer or not. Um, and that's one of the things that allowed us to scale up to uh, thousands of students. So we can show you a short demo of what this would be like from the student's point of view. For example, suppose that as a student enrolled in the class, I've been working on question number four of homework one. I've worked up a solution to some questions about object-oriented programming, and I now want to submit that for evaluation. So I click the Submit button. I select the file that I've prepared. I submit it to the site. Now if I check back a few minutes later, I can see that I got a raw score of 90 out of a possible 100 points on the homework. And if I look at the feedback from the auto grader, I can see that all of these test cases passed, but I lost points because a dessert should be healthy only if it has fewer than 200 calories. If I now go back to my code, I will look at my healthy method and realize that I accidentally inverted the sense of this test. So I can fix the method and now I'm going to resubmit my homework. And now I wait about another couple of minutes and the auto grader will evaluate my homework again. And I can now see my regraded submission where I got the maximum possible score, all my examples passed, and I can still see the output from my previous failed example. So I have a track record of what I did wrong the first time and how I fixed it in subsequent submissions. So that's the student experience for getting a particular kind of homework graded. That's only one of about five different auto graders that we built. We also have auto graders that can check your deployed services on the web, uh, that can look at the quality of your integration tests, and we're developing additional ones as well. So that kind of wraps up this video. So the tools that we've been using turned out to be great for bringing modern ideas into the classroom, also turned out to be great for being able to teach the tens of thousands of students in a MOOC. Uh, so we encourage you to read the article and comment about us and let us know what you think. Thanks very much.